I will talk louder in between targets, but then I'll pull it away from my face. Hey everybody, Greg Poole here at Boat Junkie Media. We are at the 2019 IBO World Championships in Snowshoe, West Virginia. This weekend's coverage is brought to you by AAE. Today we are going to be covering the final 10 targets in the pro division. Uh, this is gonna be obviously the, the pro male, and then we will loop back around and cover the pro female. What we have today is 10 targets. This is a new range. They set this specifically just for this coming in we have levi morgan in the lead with a 414 danny mccarthy in second with a 412 we have chris hacker at a 406 nathan brooks at a 405 and justin martin with a 403 so obviously we're going to have a battle for first and then definitely a battle for the third spot on the podium Obviously, yesterday, Levi Morgan shot a five on his first to last target, so anything can happen out here, even though the IBO is just center 11 scoring. Uh, even with that five yesterday, he still has the lead, but, you know, if, if someone makes a mistake and the other person doesn't, there can be a pretty big swing regardless of of the current scoring for this format. But they will shoot 10 arrows and if there's any ties after that, I believe they go to a, another shoot-off between those participants. But we're going to go ahead and watch Nathan Brooks here. And it looks like that first arrow just caught the top of the 11. Nathan Brooks catches the bottom of the 11. Remember, folks, for those of you watching at home, this is unknown distance. These professional archers are having to judge this distance. Center ring scores as 11, then 10, 8, and 5. Chris Hacker hit Nathan Brooks's arrow and glanced right into an 11 at 9 o'clock. So we have three 11s down there, one at 12, one at 6, and one at 9. And for those of you watching, yes, glance outs most certainly are an issue. There are no other rings to, to call, so when a dot like this starts to get filled up, it, is, it definitely presents an issue with Danny McCarthy taking, a, taking another look. One other note, this is purely luck of the draw. So Levi Morgan will be going last on this target and that's just the way it goes. Danny McCarthy with a 11 at 12 o'clock. And for those of you looking down there, yes, all four of those arrows are in about a one, one to one and a half inch group. So we have four 11s down there so far. Now your leader, Danny McCarthy, excuse me, leader Levi Morgan, he's got a decision to make here. Um, does he play safe or does he try to squeeze it in on that right side of the 11? But a glance out here would be costly on the first target. Course management is extremely important in 3D archery, so let's see what Leo I. Morgan does here. Levi Morgan just Robin Hooded the arrow at 9 o'clock in the 11. That's a way to start right there. As we were talking about, folks, glance outs are a real thing, so that was. While that turned out to be a fantastic result for Levi, that was 
that was potentially incredibly dangerous. Not that he was, of course, aiming for the back of that knock, but that could have turned out to be a very, very bad situation for Levi. But there you got it. Robin Hood for Levi Morgan. And for those of you wondering, that arrow will score as the arrow that it tubed. Not sure how often that happens out here, but it just happened right there. So as you can see, folks, even in the pro ranks, you know, there's there's a lot of camaraderie and shooting shooting a group like that is the key. Now the real question is, does Levi Morgan claim both arrows? I'm joking, of course. <laughs> Chris Hacker, that was Chris Hacker's arrow and Chris Hacker tells Levi Morgan, you can have that one. I'm gonna go out and I'm 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 gonna go out on a limb and say Levi's not gonna shoot that arrow again. I'm talking about his arrow, not Chris Hacker's. So like we were so like we were talking like we were talking about there folks, that, that was an incredibly dangerous situation for Levi with those arrows in there. And being unknown yardage, you know, it's not not like he can be you know, aiming on the right side because you just never know. That just takes away his room for, you know, any additional, you know, errors in the shot. But I'm not going to lie, catching that tubed arrow on films, that doesn't suck either. So after the first target, everything's going to stay the same. Levi Morgan will maintain a two point lead. And he will claim an arrow from Chris Hacker. So this target number two is a pull and return. <laughs> All right, here we go, arrow number two. Once again, they are shooting the Reinhardt targets. This will be the, the big white sheep. When they shoot and pull from this target, we will uh, start to head up the hill. As we work through the day, the shooting rotation will stay the same. It'll just move from target to target. So Levi Morgan was last on that target. So everybody will advance one position. Those of you wondering, before we had got started, Levi Morgan had spent a good three, four minutes going through his arrows to find the arrow he wanted to shoot for the day. Most of the time, uh, these guys can pick one arrow, maybe two, and that'll last them a 3D round. But obviously, as you saw there, Levi Morgan's back into his quiver to pull out another shooter. Here we go, Nathan Brooks up on the white ram, or goat, excuse me. That looks like a solid 11 right in the middle for Nathan Brooks. 
So despite Nathan Brooke shooting the known pro in the other 3D organization, he has he's won this IBO Worlds before, and he's been judging distance his whole life. So even not judging distance year-round, Nathan Brooke's still able to come and make it happen here at the IBO Worlds. All right, here's Chris Hacker. Chris lets down, for those of you wondering at home, targets like this and black targets are extremely hard to lead off on because you don't have anything truly to aim off of. So Nathan Brooks, of course, was shooting at a blank target down there. Now there's an arrow directly in the middle, so Chris Hacker and the ensuing archers will have something to aim on, which helps. That's going to be an eight low for Chris Hacker. Obviously, Chris slightly misjudged that target there. It's a little bit farther, looks like. Well, I'm not going to. That brings up a case in point. I'm not going to discuss any yardage or potential uh, yardage misjudging. One, because I'm not good at it. And number two, uh, because these archers are shooting for the IBO World Championships. If I do hear the archers discussing it, I'll pass that along, however. All right, here we go, Danny McCarthy, target number two. Just above Nathan Brooks's arrow, that's going to be 11 for Danny McCarthy. Current leader, Levi Morgan up. Target number two. Definitely good to see some folks following along here as well. We got Samantha Morgan and Justin Martin's wife, Brandy's come along and several other spectators. All right, Levi Morgan, target number two. It's going to be right next to Danny McCarthy's arrow, maybe one shaft higher than Danny's. Hard to tell. Hard to tell on this target because the, the white rings are very, very hard to see. No real indication from Levi Morgan there whether he thinks that's in or out. He glanced, glanced it once he stepped off the stake. Now he's looking once again. Levi Morgan stepping off to the side to try, try to get a better angle at it. Justin Martin up, target number two. That's going to be a 10-8 liner. That was a low 10-8 liner for Justin Martin. We'll have to get down here and take a look. Obviously, that arrow of Levi Morgan's is going to be the first arrow looked at. <clears throat> Justin Martin does have a ten, and they'll have to they'll have to look at Levi Morgan's.
Levi Morgan's arrow was a 10. So Danny McCarthy's going to gain one point on current leader Levi Morgan. So we're going to be down to a one point lead for Levi Morgan with eight targets to go here at the 2019 IBO Worlds. In looking at that arrow, it was less than an eighth of an inch out. So I'm not sure if that was, a, probably had to be a yardage issue because he had several arrows to aim off of. So obviously with that eight low, Chris Hacker's gonna be in a little bit of a tough position there going for the third spot. So he's gonna need to pick up the pace for sure. But as Danny McCarthy picks up another point on Levi Morgan, I think you're gonna see the tension there start to mount quite a bit because uh, at a couple weeks ago at the Classic, Danny was able to not only win the tournament, but also dethrone Levi after a 12 year run of shooter of the year. So. This is the last tournament of the year for these guys, and uh, Levi Morgan will be hitting the trail to hunt on his TV show here soon, and he wants to end it on a good note. And of course, Danny McCarthy wants to continue his winning ways. So here we go with a uh, target number three, and they're looking up the hill. I don't even see the target yet. Oh, there it is. That's going to be a, a Reinhardt bore, but I don't think that's the big one. So. That's going to be a huge consideration for these guys is which bore. So the actual size of the target is generally what they're judging off of. So it's going to be very important that they identify which target it actually is. But these guys have been looking at these targets all weekend. They do shoot the same prescribed target. So even though Reinhardt has a ton of available target options, they only use certain targets. So Chris Hacker's going to be up first. Danny McCarthy over here dialing his sight. And for those of you wondering, uh, per IBO rules, they are required to have a, uh, a covered sight tape. So, all right, Chris Hacker to full draw. Chris Hacker lets down early morning light here. The sun is not in front of us. It's actually coming from behind. So Chris was getting some, some glare from behind him, which is a common thing, especially with peeps and lenses. You can actually see what's behind you. There's actually been times where shooters can see their own, see themselves, see their jersey in their, in their scope. Chris Hacker lets down again. <laughs> and even though this is the IPO Worlds, you can, not sure if you can hear it in the background, but Chris Hacker made a joke there and all, all four of the other competitors started laughing. So the mood is still pretty light out here. Chris Hacker on his third draw. It's going to be an eight high for Chris Hacker. Chris Hacker came off the line and said, they're really fooling me out here. So obviously Chris Hacker's having a, having a rough time getting dialed in on his yardage this morning. And this target here is actually uphill and side hill. Footing is good, but uh, judging the distance on this target, it's going to be extremely difficult because it's it's uh, because of the angle. It's both angled up and side hill. Not going to lie, right here on a target like this, I think uh, a taller archer like Levi Morgan's definitely going to have an advantage, simply because of the uh, the angle uh, of his eyes. Uh, an archer like Danny McCarthy being shorter. Um, it's going to have a little bit harder time seeing some of the stuff about three quarters of the way up the hill as it starts to roll over. All right, here we go. Danny McCarthy to full draw.
McCarthy lets down. Now, on the last target, we were talking about a good lead arrow, uh, which they had from Nathan Brooks on the last one. Uh, but on this on this black target, the rings are extremely difficult to see, and that that high left eight from Chris Hacker is not necessarily going to give Danny McCarthy much to aim off of. So it's going to be a tough shot here for for Dan. All right, Danny McCarthy to full draw on his second draw. Just misses the 11 at 8 o'clock. So that's going to be about half inch or less off of the 11 at 8 o'clock for Danny McCarthy. So here's an opportunity for Levi Morgan to pick that point back up. Danny doesn't look super happy right there. I'm not sure if it was a, a yardage thing or if he wasn't happy with that shot. All right, Levi Morgan taking one last look before he comes to full draw. All right, here we go. Current leader, Levi Morgan at full draw on target number three. That's going to be an 11 for Levi Morgan. So Levi Morgan increases his lead back to two here at the 2019 IBO Worlds in Snowshoe, West Virginia. I want to remind everybody that this weekend's coverage is brought to you by AAE, Arizona Archery Enterprises. It's been a great weekend out here in, in Snowshoe. We did have the, the rain delay on Friday, but since then the weather has been absolutely fantastic. So with that second eight, uh, for all intents and purposes, Chris Hacker will probably be out of the running for the podium. So it's going to come down to Nathan Brooks and Justin Martin for that third spot, barring any any unforeseen major mishaps by Levi or Danny. All right, Justin Martin to full draw. That's going to be a screamer at 9 o'clock on the 11. I, I can't, can't call it from here. Super, super close right there at 9 o'clock. His wife Brandy coming over the right to get a better look at that arrow. All right, Nate, Nathan Brooks up now. So it's incredibly impressive for an archer like Nathan Brooks, who hasn't been shooting unknown yardage, but maybe once or twice this year to come out here to IBO Worlds and make the top five and actually be fighting for a podium spot. And an 11 for Nathan Brooks. All right, let's head up to the target and See if that arrow of Justin Martin's is going to make the cut. As you can see, there's a pretty good group of folks out here following along today. We wish we could have broadcast this live for you, but the service out here at Snowshoe on the ski slopes just wasn't, wasn't conducive for that. But we're here, and uh, we will have this video posted pretty quickly once... Uh, shooting is, is done today. So Justin Martin's arrow is called a 10. So he did, Justin Martin did not catch the 11 on that target.
As with a lot of these targets, once you get up to the target, it looks a lot farther back down to the stake than it did from the stake up to here. All right, we're now crossing over into the other lane, heading to target number four. So with that 11, Levi Morgan's gonna open his lead back up to two over Danny McCarthy. Nathan Brooks looks like he's on pace to hold on to that third spot, but Justin Martin just misses that 11. As we come around the corner here, looks like there's a antelope up here in the right in the front of all that brush. Actually, that might be an impala. It's a deer-like creature. So once again, the, the shooting order remains the same. They just advance one every target they shoot. So somebody new shoots first every time. Not sure if you can see, but Justin Martin's holding his right hand up to the side of his face to shade his eyes so he can judge this target. So light variances are incredibly important when both shooting and judging. So one tricky thing you can see about this particular set here is the footing is good. There's open terrain up until about, I don't know, a little bit in front of the animal, and then there's a big mound of dirt. So what the archers are really going to have to decide is how far they think it is to the mound of dirt and then how far from the big mound of dirt to the animal. <laughs> I don't know, Nathan. I'm the wrong person to ask. Nathan Brooks agrees, but does not want my opinion. And he's smart for that. <laughs> right. He said he wants my opinion, then he would just determine if it was uh, viable. And I assure you, it would not be. All right, here we go, Danny McCarthy. Coming to full draw on target number four. Danny McCarthy doesn't have much... Uh, Room for air right here. He needs to he needs to keep making up ground on Levi. And that's a 10-8 liner low for Danny McCarthy. Not to uh not to keep reiterating, but now I'm not where the shooters are, mind you, but at six foot seven, there was it was hard for me to even see up into the ring. So let me get over here and get a better angle on this. All right, well, where the shooters were, they have a clear view from the belly line up, but still a very, very tough target because they can't see past that mound. So one thing to keep in mind now is whether you're Levi Morgan or any of these other guys, when a shooter the caliber of Danny McCarthy shoots a 10-8 line or low like that, do you go to school? Here's Levi Morgan at full draw. Looks like that's going to be a 10 just right for Levi Morgan. Perfect height. Looks like it's just out right. Levi Morgan doesn't look super happy about that. And 
that last statement is confirmed. Levi Morgan's not happy about that. I want to thank our, our little homie Gaius Carter who's running the camera today. So here we go, Justin Martin, who's going to be in position to potentially claim that third podium spot. Every one of these shots is incredibly important. All right, Justin Martin to full draw. And Justin Martin lets down. Justin Martin to full draw on his second draw. Just below Levi Morgan's arrow, so that's going to be a 10 for Justin Martin. And I don't know if these archers are hitting right because it's a difficult target to aim at or if the side hill is affecting their bubble. Not quite sure. Nathan Brooks up now. Nathan's been shooting pretty solid all weekend. When we get a chance, we'll actually show you the, the cover that most of these archers use uh, per IBO rules, archers have to protect their sight tape with some sort of covering, whether it's a... All right, Nathan Brooks fires. That's going to be an 810 liner low for Nathan Brooks. Chris Hacker, who needs to get back on the back in the eleven game after shooting two eights, he had made a comment that the yardage is eluding him today. So let's see if Chris Hacker can get back in the game here. Chris Hacker to full draw. And Chris Hacker might have an might have an eleven there at one o'clock. So as we walk up to the target here, we'll be able to kind of get a better a better look at kind of how deceiving this target set was. Well, first observation is that animal's really small. So that's a small 3D. That's a small 3D target. And Chris Hacker did catch that 11. So actually, the mound of dirt is actually a ledge. And the, the animal is up on top of the ledge. So you can't see its legs. You can't see the, there's a actual shelf up here. Very, very deceiving. Yeah, that's, 
that's a that's an incredibly small target which which makes this even more deceiving i mean this is a that's a very very small target and you can't really from where the stake was you can't see but just up underneath the belly line so i actually thought this was a mound of dirt and then it came back down but this is actually a shelf that starts to step up so very deceiving target here at the IBO Worlds. All right, folks, we're heading into some thick stuff now. So now lighting's going to become even more critical. timber now you know you're in the thick stuff when you start to find ferns I've yet to see the target to be honest with you right all right <laughs> Justin what a animal is that uh, the standing gray ram okay that's a I can't even tell what animal it is, folks, but it's a standing gray ram. I'll take Justin Martin's word for it. So I'm standing off to the right, so all I could see was the the rear the, the rear end of the animal, but uh, apparently it's a gray ram down there. There's no need for me to step up where the shooters are. I'll just take his word for it. So here we go, your 2019 IBO men's pro leader, Levi Morgan. This will be our halfway point today. Making a final adjustment to his sight. As you can see on the on camera, it's a very, very difficult target to see. All right, Levi Morgan to full draw. Levi Morgan lets down and shakes his head. Levi says he can't see it. <laughs> Levi Morgan needs shade over his bubble. As the sun, as the sun starts to to move through these big trees, it changes the sh changes the, the the lighting on both the archer and the target. So on an incredibly difficult set like this, first of all, knowing where to aim is incredibly important. Determining the yardage, of course, is something that these guys do, but. You know, being able to verify your bubble and see the target on where to aim is is paramount. So on a target like this, I suspect guys are probably just going to try to get tens and move on. Levi Morgan at full draw. All right. So everyone says everyone says good shot, but no one's able to verify exactly where it is. So Larry Cade, who knows a thing or two about these targets, says he thinks it's an 11. So, But I'm standing off to the side. I have a, a boulder in my way. So, But everybody said that was a good shot by Levi. So we will see when we get down there. But once again, as and literally, folks, when I say the lighting changes, I'm literally meaning that from the time Levi shot until the next person comes up, the lighting could be totally different. Coming through big trees like this, shade and sunlight can hit the target, and then by the time you get ready to shoot, it can change. So these guys, once they, 
you know, like as you saw with Levi there, once he, <laughs> Danny McCarthy trying to get as solid a base as he can to get a good look at the target. Because determining where Levi Morgan's arrow is is going to determine probably where Danny aims. So as you can see, Danny McCarthy taking every opportunity to get a solid f foundation to not quite enough lead in his pencil to break that branch off, though. But anyway, as you saw with Levi, once they see the lighting that they like and they know where to aim, they execute their shots very, very quickly. All right, here we go, Justin Martin coming to full draw. five liner for Justin Martin right there. This is an extremely difficult shot. Even though it's not uphill or downhill, the lighting and the terrain make it just incredibly difficult. And by terrain, folks, I'm talking about the trees because if it was just dark or if it was just light, it would be it would be uh, easier to determine. Justin Martin just made a comment that he couldn't see anything down there, so he was pretty much shooting blind. Danny McCarthy, <laughs> da Danny McCarthy just got pitch all over his hands, so he's trying to shake hands with Levi right quick, but Levi's having none of it. Nathan Brooks at full draw. Nathan Brooks with a solid 10 right there, as it's reported. So Nathan will be happy with that 10 and roll out, I am quite sure. Gonna be curious to watch here. Danny McCarthy has some pitch on his hand, so be curious how he manages that moving forward. Chris Hacker at full draw. That's a 10-8 high, 10-8 line high for Chris Hacker. Gotta pay close attention to Danny McCarthy here. He's got that pitch on his hands and he was offered some hand, hand sanitizer to try to clean it off, but he declined. So I'd be curious if that plays a role in his shot moving forward. I think Danny said he went back to a hinge, but I actually haven't looked. I'm, I'm going to watch right here, see if he's on his button or if he's on his hinge. If Levi Morgan got an 11 on this target, it's going to be incredibly important that Danny follow suit. Because with only five targets to go, if Levi Morgan opens this lead up to three, that that might mean the end for Danny as far as winning this event. And these are the kind of shots you're going to find here at the IBO. Extremely difficult, utilizing the terrain, utilizing the trees, and every available option that they have to make it as challenging and as interesting a course as possible. Danny McCarthy to full draw, target number five, and he is shooting his button. Danny McCarthy lets down. He looked at his hand and moved his fingers around a little bit. So da Danny just made a comment that uh, because of the pitch, he feels like he has so much leverage on his back finger. So that pitch is affecting 
uh, how his release is sitting, fitting in his, in his release hand. Here we go, Danny McCarthy, draw number two. Danny McCarthy hits Levi's arrow, so unconfirmed, but uh, we're going to get down there and take a quick gander. Good shot, Dan. So, all right, we're going to hustle up here and see where Levi and Dan are. If Levi hit an 11 on that target, Danny absolutely must follow suit on it because he can't afford to let Levi go three points ahead with only five to go. Levi's an 11. Justin Martin shoots a five there. Nathan. Ten for Nathan Brooks. Chris Hacker. And eight for Chris Hacker. And Danny. Oh, and Danny McCarthy gets a ten there. Whether he glanced off of Levi's arrow or not's unknown, but that was an incredibly tough target. I mean, on a target like that, it's it's incredibly. On a target like that, it's just Im impossible to say, you know, that uh, Danny has to hit it because these guys were basically shooting blind. So, so an eleven on that, especially with no lead, was was a good shot by Levi. But no expectations there for Danny to to have to. It, but in all. You know, for all intents and purposes, Danny really, really needed that that 11. I'm curious to know if he glanced off of Levi's arrow or not. But great shot regardless by Danny. But Levi Morgan's going to take a three-point lead with five targets to go here at the 2019 IBO Worlds. All right, we've now now we're out in the sun underneath approaching one of the lifts so we're going to be shooting from so now the archers go from shooting in the dark to the dark to shooting in the sun behind them and I don't see the target yet still don't see it yet I'm, I'm walking oh lord almighty okay so this target's going to be a this target's going to be a banger. All right, we're going to have to excuse me real quick, folks, as I walk in front of the camera. Oh, heavens. All right, this is an extremely tough target. So we're, the archers obviously will have shade because of the umbrella, but they're shooting from the sun through a patch of dark woods, and the target's basically in the sun on the other side. I mean, I'm not shooting this, and I'm no 3D archer, but I can, in my opinion, this is probably the hardest target yet. And that's a and that that's a bear. So right now, there's a little bit of discussion. There is a branch hanging down. All right, so Larry Cade's gonna take take the long route. So Larry Cade's going to uh, walk down, taking the. T <laughs> oh, Danny McCarthy's making short people jokes to Larry Cade, which is <clears throat> hashtag. Yeah, so Larry Cade's gonna go down, take the land route. <laughs> Dan says we pick on our own, so Larry Cade's going to... Oh, we don't pick on our own, he said. But uh, Larry's going to go down there and remove a branch that was uh, hanging down and could potentially cause an issue. Now, uh, now it's, it's closer, I think. Closer. That, that's 
Jeez, dude. <laughs> Dan, Danny McCarthy is offering the uh, steel chainsaw he carries in his seat to uh, remove the tree. Right. So there we go. So Larry, <laughs> things are still lighthearted out here, which is good to see. Let me take a gander here. Killer job, Larry. All right. So yes, the uh, the branch was hanging down and it wouldn't have necessarily affected the 11 ring, but it was not at the target. It was during, it was in between the arrow's flight, so hard to tell depending on um, speed and height of the archer and stuff. So good, good decision there to have Larry go down and remove that potential obstacle. There's just too much at stake here. Levi Morgan ex exhibiting exquisite umbrella holding form. Mary Poppins would be jealous. <laughs> Let me move out of the way for Dan here. All right, here we go. Justin Martin, full draw on the most difficult target of the day. It looks like an 11 at 8 o'clock for Justin Martin. So Le Levi Morgan comments, nice lead. So as we were talking about the, uh, I'm going to move out of the way here because quite frankly, I don't matter. So as we were talking about, Levi Morgan commented, nice lead. So on a tough target like this, whether it's dark or light, the first archer's arrow really sets the tone for where the other archers are able to aim. Not generally a, a yardage thing, but an arrow like that by Justin Martin, which looks like it's an 11 at 8 o'clock, is going to give the rest of the archers a good indication on, on where to aim. So now, despite the fact that they're going from dark to light to dark to light, um, now they have a reference on the target to aim off of. So it's going to be a little bit easier for the rest of the archers going out. Not that it's an easy shot, of course. So here we go, Nathan Brooks to full draw. All right, Nathan Brooks shoots a 10-8 liner at 11 o'clock. We'll have to take a look when we get down there. Chris Hacker's up next. With only five targets to go, Chris needs to try to make up some ground here. Justin Martin and Nathan Brooks don't seem to be giving him much opportunity, but he needs to take advantage of every every chance he gets, and this is one of them right here. <coughs> All right, Chris Hacker to full draw. All right, Chris Hacker shoots a center 11 right there. Good shooting by Chris. And that's exactly what he needs to do after those two eights. He needs to... He needs some hits, hit, hit some 11s to get back in this. I don't suspect that the targets are going to be getting much easier out here. So every 11 is going gonna, is gonna to really matter for Chris if he wants to try to get back to that third spot. Now, obviously, Levi Morgan with a three-point lead here. With only five to go, Levi's just looking to not do anything stupid. Levi's been in this position so many times that he knows exactly what he needs to do right now. I don't want to use the word cruise control, but you pretty much just need to go on cruise control. See what see what Danny McCarthy does. If I mean if Danny hits starts pounding 11s, then you know he'll have to start gunning at him harder. But Levi just needs to keep doing what he's been doing. All right, here we go, Danny McCarthy to full draw.
Danny McCarthy shoots a 10 high left. Danny has a little bit of a Danny has a little bit of a puzzled look on his face right there, but all right, here we go. Here's your leader, Levi Morgan. I'll send it in there. That's a real sticky one. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. That's a really cold breath. Leave it. Can you say your name? Leave it. Oh, it's dead to the whole thing. No, it's. I don't got it. Oh, I thought you said you did. I did. I, I did. It's All gone. I got is that stuff. Levi Morgan there <laughs> shoots the. Uh, <laughs> shoots on that. All right, Levi hit an arrow down there, so we're going to have to get down there and check it out. Levi Morgan with another 11. Justin Martin. Shot Justin open. Nathan Brooks with an 8. Danny with a 10. So Levi Morgan's going to open up his lead to 4 with only 4 targets to go. All right, so Danny McCarthy's trying to find some hand sanitizer or something to clean off his hands. That pitch on his hands has been really affecting his release. All right, so Levi Morgan. It's going to open up a four-point lead over Danny McCarthy, the 2019 IBO Worlds with four targets to go. That eight by Nathan is going to help out Chris Hacker and Justin Martin for sure. Chris has kind of gotten back into the groove of things. Justin continues to shoot pretty strong, so it's going to be interesting what happens for that third spot. All right, here we go, target number seven. Archers are in the dark. Let's see what we got here. Okay, shooting through this, shooting through this uh, part of timber over this road, through some more timber, crossed another road into a, with a turkey out in the wide open. And I'm no 3D archer, but that doesn't look like a close one to me. Levi turns around and shakes his head. <laughs> so, for those of you, for those of you looking, chaos. Look at Levi Morgan's bow. You'll see that there's a flap on his sight 
that is uh, per IBO rules, uh, archers have to protect their sight tapes to prevent anybody from <clears throat> cough, cough, accidentally seeing what they have their yardage set for. So that's what I was referring to earlier. <laughs> he said it's a vein that's just screwed onto there, but literally there is no rule on how, it's just that they have to cover up their sight tapes for this. So when you see these guys at Vegas or Reading or any other shoots and they still have it on there, it's because well, that's their site and they just leave it on there. So they're used to it. But that's what I was referring to earlier, folks, when I said they have to protect their tapes. So, here we, so the... Uh, Archers are, are discussing the difficulty of this shot and turning to Larry Cade, who sets courses. And uh, this, is a, this is an incredibly interesting shot right here. Nathan Brooks starts to come to full draw and feels some feel some lumps so he uh, lets down to clean off his arrow there was apparently some target remnant on there which is never never a good thing all right here we go nathan brooks to full draw This is incredibly difficult. The turkeys are always hard anyway, but this one's out there, a pretty good poke. Nathan Brooks lets down. Now, I'm gonna ask Samantha Morgan here, correct me if I'm wrong, but once they come to full draw and let down, they cannot adjust their sight again, correct? No, no, they can't, gotta leave it. Okay, so, okay, it's always been that way, but just wanted to verify that once these archers come to full draw on the target, if they let down, they cannot readjust their sight. And obviously that's for good reason. It prevents framing and other uh, yardage judging assistant, assistant techniques. So apparently Nathan Brooks can't see this, can't see this uh, target very well. So Danny McCarthy offering to stand there with his light and light up his pen. So, but once again, the whole letting down sight tape thing—that's that's part of what you know lends to the credibility of these organizations. Is you know you got to protect what your yardage is, and if uh, if you draw back and it looks looks good shot by Nathan Brooks there, 10 on that. But if you come to full draw and look through and it doesn't look right, you, you cannot adjust your sight. So Nathan Brooks is pretty happy with a 10 on that target there. Here we go, Chris Hacker, who has a chance to make up some ground. After shooting two eights, he's picked it back up. Only four targets to go here at the 2019 IBO Worlds. All right, so Chris Hacker's now up. He's obviously going to be adjusting the 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 intensity of his uh, sight light. Making a quick adjustment to his tape before he shoots. Chris Hacker not able to keep that one on the rest, has to let down before he gets to full draw. All right, here we go, Chris Hacker. On the turkey. Levi, Levi Morgan and Danny McCarthy watching intently. Looks like Chris Hacker has an 11 on this turkey. 
which is going to be a huge move for him. Well, huge move unless everybody else shoots 10s and 11s too, but great shot by Chris Hacker right there. He has definitely picked things back up after a couple eights early. All right, Danny McCarthy up now taking, taking a last look, making sure he doesn't need to make any final adjustments to his tape. Danny and Levi joking how Chris Hacker stepped up there and made it look like nothing. All right, here we go, Danny McCarthy, full draw on the turkey. All right, Danny McCarthy hits an arrow and glances up into a 10. So although Danny was aiming hard at that one, he'll be he'll be happy to He'll be happy with a 10 on this target here. So here's Levi Morgan as we were talking about earlier. Levi just needs to be smart here. He's got a 4 point lead with only 4 targets to go, so there's no reason for him right now to to do anything like we talked about in the interview yesterday is picking a safe number. If he thinks it's a certain number and he's pretty confident in it, you know, depending on what the rings look like, maybe add a little bit to be safe. But Levi's been, he's, Levi's the best to ever do this. So let's see what Levi Morgan does here. Levi Morgan smashes an 11, gives the fist pump right there. So Levi Morgan does exactly what Levi Morgan does right there, smashes an 11. Danny and Levi have a little bit of conversation on this particular target, but that's going to be, if Danny McCarthy's arrow stays 10, that's going to be a... That's going to be a five-point lead for Levi Morgan with three to go, and that'll that'll pretty much be a wrap. Levi Morgan just showed his hand to his wife and his his hand is shaking, which he's used to and he's shot through it time after time. So whether his hand is shaking or not. Justin Martin with a good shot. So these archers, <laughs> these archers come out here. <laughs> Levi Morgan turns to Larry Cade and says, ha. So uh, this was an incredibly tough target. And these guys shot these guys. <laughs> <laughs> These guys absolutely tore this target up. I mean, they they literally have what amounts to about a one, one and a half inch group down here with two, probably three 11s. Let's get down here and take a closer look, but things are still lighthearted in the group. Obviously, Dan and Levi have been shooting against each other head to head for decades <laughs> i mean even though they're young guys they've been shooting against each other at the elite level of 3d for a very very long time nathan brooks with a 10. hackers an 11. good shot by chris hacker danny mccarthy's a 10. and levi morgan's an 11. That's a great target right there. That's one of those targets that when you walk up on it, could literally determine a tournament. <laughs> All 
All right, stopping for a quick group photo right there. Well deserved. So we're gonna head on down here to this next target. As we head down, we only got three to go. But these archers, obviously Levi Morgan, after his five with one to go yesterday, he was looking to uh, he was looking to come out today and make sure he could close this out, and he's doing just that. A four point lead with three targets to go. Just just don't don't see him making that. And you know at this point when you know you look at Dan McCarthy, Dan's just protecting second at this point, and looks like he's doing so. But the battle for third there with Nathan and Nathan and Justin keeps rolling along. But Chris Hacker's not giving up. All right, here we go, target number eight. We are out in the middle of the sun, right next to the lift. And we are shooting, and by we I mean them, an antelope. The antelope's kind of around the corner. There's a little bit of a drainage cut between the archers and the, and the antelope, but the level of these guys shooting, they're probably gonna be able to figure this one out pretty quick. So as these guys take the allotted time to figure out what the yardage is on this, I just want to remind everybody that this weekend's coverage here at the IBO Worlds is brought to you by AAE. Have a, had a <laughs> also obviously want to point out that uh, this entire weekend been been rocking the uh, the Kafaru Shape Charge Pack and the Zeiss Binos, and they've uh, neither have let us down. So here we go, Nathan Brooks with the holding umbrella for Chris Hacker. Beautiful day out here today. Very, f I'm trying to look around here, I see like maybe half a cloud in the sky, but absolutely fantastic weather today. Could not ask for any better conditions to finish the IBO Worlds in. Chris Hacker to full draw. It's going to be a 10 low for Chris Hacker, about three quarters of an inch below the 11. All right, Dan McCarthy up. Obviously, Dan's looking to do 11 out here so he can make sure he stays in position for second place, but also make sure in case Levi Morgan makes any mistakes that he's able to capitalize on it. So obviously I've referenced going to school several times so in groups like this when when a fellow pro like Chris Hacker shoots one low, generally speaking, the archers will pay attention to that and reevaluate and take a second look. Here's Danny McCarthy at full draw. It's 11 for Danny McCarthy, right on the 11 line at 8 o'clock. Morgan here is not going to be looking to give up any points to Dan McCarthy on principle. But of course, you know, he's going to be definitely shooting for safe numbers. And there he goes. He makes a slight, slight sight adjustment. Maybe sounded like maybe four clicks. 
which depending on how far your sight is from your bow and the speed of your bow will four clicks varies for everybody. That's an inside out 11. All right, Levi Morgan with an inside out 11 right there, so. So Levi Morgan makes sure that he maintains his four-point lead. Justin Martin up now, so the battle for third here is pretty tight. All right, here we go. Justin Martin to full draw. Plenty of arrows down there to aim off of. Screamer there at 1 o'clock for Justin Martin on the 11 line. All right, here we go, Nathan Brooks. Last up on the antelope. Danny McCarthy with the with the two hand umbrella hold. All right, Nathan Brooks to full draw. Dead center eleven for Nathan Brooks. Good shot by Nathan Brooks there. So as you can tell from Levi Morgan's pace of walking, he uh, pretty much sees the finish line in sight and knows what he needs to do on these last two targets. And Levi Morgan's generally, generally one that knows how to close out. Nathan Brooks take a take a good look at Justin Martin's arrow. They'll actually come back and look at that. So basically the the group will take a gander at Justin's arrow, make their determination internally, and then they'll all vote at the same time. All right, so the guys are, guys are joking about lights and mirrors and all kinds of other. <laughs> so obviously, as you can tell, the mood here at the on the top target still, still pretty light. But joking, joking lights, mirrors, refractive devices aside, these guys take these arrow calls extremely serious. So apparently, as you can see from Levi Morgan, they, they write their vote on their hand, and then they reveal their vote. All right, so Justin Martin, by group decision, gets, gets the 11. So that's going to be a good shot there by Justin Martin to grab that 11. These archers take getting the arrow call right extremely serious. I mean, these guys do this for a living, so calling arrows properly is 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 incredibly important to every single one of these guys. 
Yeah, yeah. As Dan pulls out the GoGo gadget inspection device, these guys, you know, I know a lot of people. You know, th there's there's no gifts out here. No, Dan says to be clear, that's to see his indicator, and he's like 32 years old, but but uh, he's. Pre oh, Dan says his other bow has a black tape, so he needs it to be able to be able to see, but. Um, but stuff like that comes in handy, and you know, like I was saying, these guys are these guys want the same consideration for their arrow, arrow calls as anybody else. So they want to have every opportunity to make the best call possible. So, and just as a frame of reference, the uh, the group voted unanimously. The group voted that and 11 for Justin Martin unanimously. So there was no contestation there whatsoever. Obviously, Justin Martin doesn't vote because, well, it's his arrow. So here we go. We're coming down to shoot right underneath the, the end of the, this particular lift. All right, let me get down here and see what we got. Oh, heavens. So there is a, uh, there's a, looks like a wolf up in the dark there. So we're right underneath the, the lift and uh, they're shooting uphill. There's a, there's a uh, drop down about how far in between us and the target. So it drops down and then goes uphill. So this is gonna be an extremely difficult target because at this angle there, there probably will be a cut. It's just a matter of how each individual archer is going to determine how they figure out what to sh shoot it for. And as you can see, let me look over here. You can't see it right now, but right in, in between the archers is a disc golf hole. So the uh, Snowshoe Resort here has a lot more activities than, than uh, most folks, than most folks uh, realize. I mean, we've been here for three days and every single day we, you know, see something new to do or s something else that uh, Snowshoe has to offer for folks. But we are here for the 2019 IBO Worlds, so. <laughs> so these guys are definitely f focused in on this. Danny McCarthy will be up first. Danny McCarthy taking one last look. All right, here we go. Danny McCarthy to full draw. So Danny McCarthy with an 11-10 liner right at 1 o'clock, 1.30. Hard to tell, it's so dark up in there. Levi Morgan making a last second sight click. So here we go, Levi Morgan, your current leader here at the 2019 IBO Worlds. That's going to be an 810 liner high left for Levi Morgan. He will not be happy about that one.
right, Jessa Martin's up, I'm making a last minute sight adjustment. Jessa Martin taking a last peek through his binoculars up there. All right, here we go, Jessa Martin coming to full draw. It's going to be a 10-8 liner at 8 o'clock for Justin Martin. This target's proving to be extremely difficult to both judge and see for these archers. Opportunity for Nathan Brooks to pick up a little bit of ground here. Obviously, if uh, Danny McCarthy shot a 10 here, Levi Morgan's arrow there at the 810 liner turns out to be an eight. That'll cut Levi's lead in half. So that'll be a pretty big move if it if it if it happens. Nathan Brooks hit just underneath Levi, right on the 10 line. So here we go, Chris Hacker. Chris Hacker checking his tape. Here we go, Chris Hacker. Chris coming to full draw. This has proved to be an exceptionally difficult target for, uh, for this top peer group. Chris lets down. Archers verifying here if this is a pull and return or they would need to take their stuff with them. And they do take their stuff with them. Here we go, Chris Hacker at full draw. Let down. This is an incredibly difficult target to see even with arrows in it. Chris Hacker on his second draw. Obviously, finding a reference to aim is incredibly important for these guys. Uh, eight, ten liner low. We'll have to get up there and see where things are at. So we're coming down to the nitty gritty here at the 2019 IBO Worlds and the Men's Pro. Levi Morgan has a close one down there. He is currently leading. We'll see how that uh, washes out once we get up here and get a closer look. Yeah, you walk out this way. You leave your stuff there. All right, so we're going to get up here, and I'm just going to hold on to Danny McCarthy's belt loop, and he can drag me up the hill. Not really. All right, here we go. McCarthy's a 10. Levi's an 8. Justin's a 10. Nathan's a 10. That was a five for Chris Hacker. So that's going to cut Levi Morgan's lead in half right there, folks. It's an eight for Levi Morgan and a ten for Danny McCarthy.
And that right there is the very kind of circumstance that we've been talking about all day. Even here, even here at the IBO, all it takes is one mistake. And like I was saying earlier, Danny McCarthy just wants to make sure he stays in position to capitalize if a mistake happens. And a little mistake just happened. It wasn't a five, but it was a mistake nonetheless. So as we weave our way down through the woods here, we're almost finished. But uh, things have gotten a little bit tight at the top there with that eight by Levi Morgan. Obviously, Danny McCarthy will be thinking back on the glance out and some of the other missed opportunities there, but he's still keeping himself well in the hunt. go and we have a gator so we got the Reinhardt gator down there we are in the thick stuff we are uh, there is some sun breaking through in certain points but the alligator does not have any of those so the archers will have sporadic sunlight on them and once again folks just comes down to luck of the draw and Levi Morgan is up first And after that eight on the last target, this is probably not the optimal situation for Levi. Levi scratching his head. This is an incredibly important shot right here. This shot right here could literally be the tournament, folks. Danny McCarthy always makes, you know, himself available to take these opportunities. So after that last date, if, if Levi Morgan doesn't make a good shot here, Danny McCarthy will have a huge opportunity. Levi Morgan shoots an 11 on the gator. And that's exactly what he needed to do. And that's pretty much going to be a wrap. So that's going to be a wrap for the 2019 IBO Worlds. Levi Morgan's going to be your 2019 IBO World Champion. So now we got Danny McCarthy up who needs to solidify second. And then it'll pretty much be a race between Nathan Brooks and Justin Martin for, for third. All right, just real quick, we're here with your 2019 Men's Pro Champion, the 2019 Worlds. You had us a little freaking out there with that uh, eight right, with that eight on that last target. Yeah, yeah, me too, because I judged it perfect, and I lost Danny's knock in the target. I mean, this has been uh, probably the hardest 10 targets I've ever shot. I mean, it's just everything. I lost his knock in the target, and uh, should have let down, and I was searching, and then fired it high was a perfect number and so another rookie mistake that I was like good thing I had a good lead <laughs> well and and I was just commenting when you were shooting that uh, of all the circumstances to be in shooting that eight and then coming and having to lead off on the gator to win it me and Nathan were coming down through here he's like what could he have done here Nathan's like probably a bomb gator walk around the corner bomb gator. there it is <laughs> Nathan's like I swear I didn't walk this before we got here <laughs> all right congratulations buddy we'll catch up with you here in a little bit all right thanks
All right, that's Levi Morgan, everybody. Chris Hacker just shot. Let me... Uh, That was Justin Martin, folks, and he just shot an 11, so that's going to put him in a great position to be on the podium. Nathan Brooks shoots just right of the 11. And really, folks, that's where lighting comes down to it and what, what you can see and where you can aim. I mean, these guys come around to the last target, which is a bomb alligator, and they're just smashing it, but on the on the wolf prior, they, they, they all had a hard time. So it's a real indication of how difficult this course was and how well the IBO does at setting up these ranges. Just talked to Justin Martin there, and despite that 11, that five's going to cost him. So it looks like Justin Martin will finish fourth. Nathan Brooks will finish third. And barring any unforeseen issues, Danny McCarthy will be second. Of course, Levi's going to be your winner. Chris Hacker lets down. Hacker, full draw on the Gator. Ten for Chris Hacker. Chris recovered great after shooting a couple eights early. Good performance there by Chris Hacker. Now Danny McCarthy to solidify second place. Taking a hard look at this, this gator is an incredibly important shot for Danny right now. Making a final sight adjustment. Without his electronically lit magnifying glass, of course. <laughs> it's great to see the camaraderie of these guys out here. I mean, they're all out here competing, but, but the amount of camaraderie is, is absolutely fantastic. Danny McCarthy at full draw. Hit Levi's arrow, so that's probably going to be an, an 11 or a 10 for Dan McCarthy. So Dan's going to finish second, and Levi Morgan's going to be your 2019 champion. All right, everybody, that was the uh, final 10 targets of the 2019 IBO World Championships in the Men's Pro. Levi Morgan's going to be your champion. Hope you enjoyed the coverage today. Just want to remind everybody that this weekend's coverage is brought to you by AAE. That's going to be a wrap for the Men's Pro here at the 2019 IBO World Championships. Thank you for tuning in to Bo Junkie Media.